9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Good morning. My name is Alfie Banwell. Hello, and I'm Harry Kershaw. Joining me today is Sir David Carter, and he is Regional Schools Commissioner for the South West. Good morning, Sir David. Good morning. Hello. Um, now, we're going to be interviewing him this morning, just a few questions, um, and it might be beneficial for the students here at the school. Is that okay with you? That's absolutely fine. Brilliant. Uh, so we'll dive straight in. Uh, what made you want to be one of the first schools commissioners? Well, I think the opportunity to do something that was brand new was quite important to me. Yeah. Um, I've spent all of my working career in schools and education. Um, and school improvement and trying to make sure that schools deliver a really high quality education for young yeah. people is a big priority for me. Uh, and I think this opportunity through the Real Regional Schools Commissioner's Post was a chance for me to think about how I did that on a bigger field. Uh, and the South West is certainly a bigger field. Definitely. Do you think you represent the government or the schools and the pupils? That's, that's a very good question and it comes from two very different angles, isn't it? And I, and I suppose the answer is that, that there's a bit of both in that. Um, I mean, clearly one of, the, one of the criteria I have for being successful in this job is to try to make sure that schools perform as well as they possibly can and to make sure that every child, wherever they live in the South West, has access to a good school. Uh, but I'm a civil servant, I'm employed by the government, so therefore there will be elements of the government's educational policy that absolutely it's my responsibility to, to deliver as well as I can. So I think it's a bit of both. There's uh, quite a lot of debate on whether creative subjects are valid or not. Has your opinion changed? Um, well, as a former music teacher, uh, I have a view about that. Um, I think uh, the creative subjects in schools are really important. Um, I think for many young people, uh, the arts, whether it's drama or dance or music or visual art, represents maybe the highlight of their week. Um, I mean, we're here in a very creative uh, school today. Yeah. Um, you know, the digital expertise and the creative technologies that you're using just to conduct this interview say that that's a very important part of what this school has been set up to do. Uh, and I think a creative education is very much part of the roundedness that you want a young person to have in education. So for me, the arts are very important. You were a music teacher. What was that like? Um, well, it was fantastic. Um, uh, the two subjects that I enjoyed most in school were music and PE. Uh, and I was lucky enough to find a job as a music and a PE teacher. That's when I, that, that was how I started. And I taught music for uh, just over 15 years before I became a deputy head and then a head teacher. Um, and I think, I think uh, music was one of those subjects that, uh, that many people really enjoyed because it's a part of everybody's life. And I think the challenge being a music teacher was to deliver the kind of music curriculum that enabled people to develop their talent, develop their knowledge and their understanding, but to make it fun at the same time. Um, and I think one of, the, one of the benefits of music and sport in school is that, yes, it's a curriculum subject on the timetable, but it's also, these are two subjects that also form a big part of the extracurricular life of school. school. And I think even in this job, when you see a really successful school, um, the arts and sport are often the pulse of that school. Yeah, actually brilliant. Yeah, so do I. Um, we heard that you used to teach in tracksuit. Um, now there's like, how do you feel, what's your opinion on um, uh, students and pupils, sorry, pupils and teachers relationships and mm. um, building and you know. Building. Yeah, well, it's well, it's very very important, isn't it? Uh, I, I think that you know you're, you're in a school, you're trying to build one single school community, which is uh, the children, the, the staff. It's also the parents as well. I, yeah. I talk a lot about what I call the learning triangle between home, between school, with students, and if you get the three points of the triangle intact, I think you've got a really good chance of making that education successful. Um, I mean, the, the, the teaching in the tracksuit bit is true, but, it, but it's kind of there's, there's a pragmatic element to it as well. That quite often I'd be teaching a PE lesson followed by a music lesson. I wouldn't yeah. have time to change back. <coughs> but there was also true to say that when I started teaching, I was 20, 21, um, that, and I taught in quite a difficult school in London, quite a challenging school to begin with, where I think sport was enjoyed by the students more than music was, that it did my credibility no harm to teach my music lessons in yeah. the tracksuit. Uh, so there's a little bit of truth in that, yes. There's been a whole move towards exams away from coursework and it's argued that it doesn't really help pupils who struggle with, the, with their ap academic. What do you think of the changes? Um, well, I, I think that uh, the exam system and the assessment system is continuing to go through a period of change. Um, I think there is something about uh, the exam system that is a true test of, of, of how you perform. 
Um, I recognise that lots of children find exams stressful. Um, I don't remember enjoying them myself that much. Um, but, it, but it creates an equality because if you prepare for the exam and you're well taught and you're well prepared for the exam, you understand what's going to happen when you walk into that exam room, that enables every child to have the same chance. Whereas we will, you, know, you, you will be aware that there are many students uh, who receive and need a lot of help in order to produce good pieces of coursework. Uh, and an exam system, I think, uh, is something which enables us to think differently about how that would work. Um, but, I, but I think it's also about uh, a measure of the progress that young people have as they go through from you know, the age of, in secondary school, certainly the age of 11 through to 18, uh, and the best schools ensure that those children make the best progress. Mm. We do a lot of uh, very practical subjects here, and we do find it very valuable. And uh, employers also like to work with us. Uh, would you agree that there is an important place uh, for this approach? Um, I think there's an important place for that approach in all schools, yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this school has been set up and has been funded by the government because that's, it, that's the priority that, that is right for this school. And, yeah. and one of the measures that I would use to test whether or not this school was being successful is that engagement with employers. Um, and not just the exam outcomes for people like yourselves, but also what kind of career opportunities open up for you, because that's what the studio school was, was set up to achieve. Um, but I think the notion that schools work differently with employers is true. Um, and I think we have to move to a, to a different relationship with employers where it's not just about um, people securing careers advice or even employment opportunities, but understand more about what the skills are you need to be a successful employee. Um, and whilst it's a, it's a little trite at times, it's yeah. true also that people of your age will be uh, taking on employment in the next 40 or 50 years in jobs that we don't really conceive at the moment. Many of those jobs will be the same as they are today because I suspect we're always going to need doctors and teachers. Yeah. But some of the jobs, particularly in the creative industries that, that you're specialising in here, um, the jobs will develop in line with the pace of, of technological innovation. So uh, we, we do need to have a close relationship with the world of work for those reasons, if not the others. If you could go back to school as a pupil, like now if you went back to school, what would you do differently? That's a very good question. Um, I, would probably, um, I would probably have worked harder at some of the subjects that at the time I didn't particularly enjoy. So I came through an era in the 1970s where my, my curriculum and my, my O-levels as they were at the time, uh, before GCSEs took their place, it was quite narrow, so I, 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 took, uh, I took two languages, which I really enjoyed. I took two art subjects. I didn't do any sciences. I gave up sciences at the end of year nine, which I think, looking back, was probably a mistake. Um, and now, uh, another subject which I really enjoy finding out more about is maths, but I was, I was hopeless at maths in school. Uh, and, I, and it took me two goes to get my O-level maths, and yeah. I found it a real struggle. <coughs> um, so I think some of those subjects, if I, if I had my time again, I would look at, the, look at that. Uh, you've been in many schools and led many schools as well. Uh, what do you think about ours? I think, uh, I think your school has made an excellent start. Yeah. Um, but I think it takes a school some time to really firmly embed in, in its community and in terms of what it's doing. It's, it's not been open two years yet. No. Um, but I think in terms of the way that the school is staying very loyal to what it, what it claimed it wanted to do, what its vision was when we yeah. approved it, um, I think it's excellent. Uh, and I think it's absolutely filling a need uh, in the Bath, Bristol, South Gloucestershire community uh, for young people that want this type of education. Um, yeah. and, I, and I think it's probably going to go on to be one of our most successful studio schools, and I should be watching very closely to make sure it does. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you for talking to us today. It's a pleasure. Okay. Thank you very much. Pleasure.